Good Friday and we're going to be spending some time thinking about the Easter account, particularly the cross and what Jesus did there. And so we're going to start with a song and then we're going to have a reading. We're going to be looking at John chapter 1 and we're going to be looking at Luke 23 because we're continuing in our series in Luke. And then we're going to be talking about a few key verses from those passages about what Jesus did on the cross, what he achieved, what he came to do. And a bit about who he is and how he's able to do what he does. We're going to start with this song, Man of Sorrows, and then straight after that, the readings, and then we'll focus on a few of those key verses. Man of sorrows, Lamb of God, by his own. Salvation. 
John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Luke 23, verse 18. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found him in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts they insistently demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. Verse 32 Two other men both criminals were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine and vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Our key verse today is Luke 23, 34, where Jesus says, Father, forgive them. Father. Jesus is quite unique in his day in referring to God as Father. It wasn't something that others did. We do today. That's because Jesus himself said to his disciples, when you pray, you can say, Our Father who is in heaven. But, it's only possible to approach God and know God as Father because of Jesus, because of a connection to him. We've already seen or read in John, that in John 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 12, it says this, To all who receive him, that's Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We can become children of God and we can approach God as Father because of Jesus and what he's done. And not only what he's done, but who he is and what he's done. That's why we had the two readings today. The one from John is about who he is. The one in Luke is about what he's done. John tells us quite plainly who Jesus is. And he makes it very clear that Jesus is not just a good man, but he's God become man. That Jesus in in coming to this earth was God coming to this earth. 
And John confirms that throughout the book of John. John's especially helpful with this. He tells us that Jesus said things like, I and the Father are one. That if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And the only way to the Father is, is through me. Jesus, we see then, refers to God as Father in a different kind of way. As one who is intricately connected, linked, family, close, the same as, in fact, of the same type. He's God. Come to do what we see in Luke 23. To die on the cross. To die in our place. To, to bring about our forgiveness. To bring about our salvation. To connect us to God so that we can come to know God as Father. And so these two readings together show us that who Jesus is, that he is God become man, and what he's done. He's brought about forgiveness, reconciliation, rescue, salvation. He's, he's done everything that we need to know God, both now and forever. And to know him and experience him as father. And to inherit all that is his home and his kingdom, heaven itself. It's all Jesus. It's all through Jesus. God in Jesus came into the world to us and for us. As John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. It's Easter. Uh, what, what I'm talking about here is Christmas and Easter combined, right? Like the package, God, Emmanuel, came to us in the form of Jesus to save us. And he did that through dying on the cross and giving his life for us. Dying in our place, doing everything necessary to save us. But those verses from John and the verses from Luke 23 confirm this. Show us that. For that forgiveness to be individually applied to us. Yes, he's done everything to make it possible, but for it to be received and to be ours personally, there's something we need to do. John 1, 12, we've already mentioned it. To all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gives the right to become children of God. For us to know and experience God and to experience heaven it tells us there yes Jesus has done it all but we need to receive his gift of forgiveness we need to believe that Jesus is the saviour there's a kind of ABC right of approach to this we, we heard it a few weeks back from Austin when he preached we have to A admit that we are in need of forgiveness admitting we're wrong and needing needing a saviour and believing that Jesus is that saviour so admit we're sinners admit we're wrong believe Jesus is who he says he is God become man come to save us and then see or choose to trust in him choose that offer of salvation if you're not comfortable with the word choose well how about call call out to him cry out to him save me I want to receive this. So call to receive him. Choose to receive him. At the end of the day, John says the same thing. To all who receive him, believing in him, that's how you get this forgiveness and salvation. And forgiveness is key to Christianity. It is what it's all about. Yes, salvation is about heaven and knowing God. But to get it, to receive it, we need forgiveness because of our sin. And that's why we need to admit we're sinners, believe that Jesus dealt with sin and his saviour and choose to receive him. The Bible makes it very clear that we're all in this same predicament. Everyone has sinned. Everyone has done wrong. All human beings do. And, and I mean, look at the world. We see such brokenness. We see broken lives. We see broken families. We see broken communities and even broken nations because of, largely because 
largely because yes because of sin in general there's suffering but largely the suffering that we experience the brokenness and the mess that we're in is because of human selfishness greed and pride we would be so naive in fact i'd say we were crazy to think otherwise than this that we are all are sinful we all do wrong you can see it everywhere the world is in a mess and people do horrible things and yet this is what makes it so incredible god who who created the earth and is almighty and all perfect is willing to forgive he's wanting to forgive god i think seems when i look at the bible and i think of the way he he deals with people compared to how we deal with each other is so much more generous than any of us so much more willing to to forgive than any of us i mean i mean you, you just look at the selfishness and you look at the greed and you look at the pride that we've already mentioned and how that causes such suffering and brokenness and but it's compounded isn't it by our response to it as well we respond to selfishness with selfishness or with greed with greed with violence with violence with pride with pride human beings want vengeance yes yes I, there has to be justice and judgment i understand that but our tendency is always our leniency leaning is always towards revenge and blame and shame and retribution and what we do to ourselves is we add suffering on suffering on difficulty on difficulty and pain on upon pain we perpetuate the brokenness and the suffering by our inability to forgive and the forgiveness we see in Jesus on the cross what we're looking at today these words father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing it it just shows that he must be god cuz no human being forgives like that i mean he's forgiving the people who are actually putting him on the cross who are guilty of getting him to that point where he's on the cross and he's saying yes they're guilty because they need forgiveness but at the same time he's even saying i recognize they're blind I recognize they're ignorant and stupid. I recognize they lack direction. They they're lost basically. They're like sheep as the scriptures say who've gone astray, gone their own way. They're lost, they're stupid, they're ignorant. They're still guilty because they need forgiveness, but he's patient with us, wanting us to be forgiven, wanting us to come to him and experience him. God in the Old Testament, even in the Psalms, where he says, you know, I know what you're like. I know how weak you are as human beings. I know how fragile you are and stupid you are and prone to do crazy stuff. To hurt each other and damage yourselves and go against what I have called you to do for your good and for the best of mankind. I know how you're formed. And that's why I'm willing to forgive. And it's not just that it's to bring about for the forgiveness of the sins that we've committed to each other. It, it's about the sins we've committed towards God. Yes, so much of what we do in sinning against each other is sinning against God because God has said, don't do this and don't do that. And it's all stuff to protect us and ensure that the world would be a better place if we were to follow God's ways. So, so we have like deliberately gone against God and so yes we need his forgiveness but it's not just that the, these verses um john and luke 23 combined show us the big issue around forgiveness yes we need forgiveness for all kinds of things and jesus is willing to forgive anything and everything i mean he's he's willing to forgive those who actually put him on the cross so he, that proves how much he's willing to forgive but the one thing that will stop you getting his forgiveness the one thing that will stop you getting to heaven is rejecting him he's not receiving him for who he is and for what he can do for you so forgiveness is possible and is available but it's only for those who who, who receive jesus 
and believe in him. And we see in Luke 23 just this picture of, of all these different people, a ton of different people who, who just won't do that, who just do not receive him and believe in him, but reject him instead. And he's willing to forgive all those people. It's not that he won't forgive them for all the, what they've done to him, but they won't get that forgiveness unless they change one fundamental thing. And that's if they will repent of not receiving and believing in him. If they will not turn to him. If they will not turn from their rejection to receiving. In these verses we have all these different examples of people that Jesus says, Father, forgive. Forgive them. Forgive them for like John 1 says, for, for though he made the world, they don't recognise him. Though he came into the world, they, they're not receiving him. Though he came for the world, they're rejecting him. I mean, it happened throughout Jesus' life. Obviously, we see it in Luke 23, but it happened even at Christmas when there was no room for him in the inn and then Herod wanted to kill him. We see it throughout his life that from very early on, when he starts doing just amazing, wonderful, good miracles and preaching and teaching like no one else and offering forgiveness, opposition, hatred, people from day one are plotting to kill him. And now here we are in Luke 23, and this is what it's come to. So first you've got Judas rejecting Jesus, disowning him, handing him over, betraying him. Then you've got Peter even disowning him and denying that he even knew him. But then you've got those who put him on trial, the, the Jewish leaders who from day one ha had rejected him and didn't want him. I felt threatened by him and wouldn't understand or wouldn't accept his teachings. They hand him over to higher authorities because they couldn't follow through what they wanted to do without Pilate and without Herod, who both found nothing wrong with Jesus, but still were willing to sentence him to death. Not taking his claim seriously, rejecting him. Pilate pathetically washing his hands of him and then handing him over to be beaten. And instead of freeing Jesus as an innocent man, he was willing to, at that time of year, to, to release Barabbas, a guilty man. As the crowd, the crowd, the whole crowd, were rejecting Jesus. A week before they received him as their king, and now they're rejecting him. As they say, crucify him, free Barabbas. Isaiah 53 predicted this and prophesied it, that he would be despised and rejected. That he would actually then be led like a lamb to the slaughter. Being considered by all those there as nobody and nothing if not worse. And Luke 23 confirms that's how he's treated as Isaiah prophesied. Rejected, rejected, rejected. Scorned, scoffed at. And all those people had an opportunity to see what he could do. Hear what he had to say and they refused to believe and as we've already said there's a crowd of people just normal people there's the religious leaders there's Herod there's Pilate there's Judas but there's a whole crowd of people who reject him and then there's the Roman soldiers given the task of driving the nails into his hands and feet and lifting him up on a cross but they scorn him, they mock him, they beat him beforehand. They mistreated him and they abused him. Yet, having been handed over, treated this way by all these different people, and then nailed to that tree and crucified, how, how does Jesus respond? Can you imagine you in that situation can you imagine what you would want to say to those religious leaders Pilate and the Roman soldiers and then the whole crowd of people who'd said crucify him who are there now watching you die what would you want to say to them maybe you'd want to say have mercy 
maybe you'd want to say not such pleasant stuff to them about who they are and what they've done and what they're like. Almost call down a curse on them because they're, they're your enemies. You know what I'm going to say? What does Jesus do? We've looked at the verse already, verse 34. Father, forgive them. That's what he says. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. In this statement we see his incredible compassion but also his character. This confirms again that it can only be God. Jesus can only be God. Only God can forgive like this. And this is also core to his commission, his mission. This is what he came for, to forgive. This is why he came. This is why he can say it. He can say it because he's God and he's so much more generous than we are. But he can say it because that's why he came. He knows what he came to do, to bring about forgiveness. In order to demonstrate this a bit further, Luke records in verses that follow in verses 32 onwards that there were two other men there both criminals notice that there were two other men so Jesus is being referred to as a man even though we've said he's the man who was God he was in the appearance of man but there were two criminals Jesus was not a criminal they may have treated him as one people may have thought he was one because of the death he died but Luke makes it very clear he was not a criminal, he was not guilty. These two men are guilty. These two men are deserving of death. That's what Luke wants to make clear. And one of them recognises that he's guilty. One of them recognises that he deserves to die. The other is angry, is bitter, resentful, and not a bit remorseful, not a bit repentant. And we see in these two guilty people the whole of the human race represented. We see in these two guilty people all those other people who were there at the scene of the cross represented. In this passage, there are a ton of guilty people. Everybody in this is guilty except one person. The one person who's giving his life. Who is willing to forgive? That's the weird thing about forgiveness. The one who's the victim, the one who's being badly treated is the one who gives. And Jesus is giving his life and he's willing to give forgiveness to all those guilty people there. And it's how we respond to him that matters. And we see the contrast on the cross. One on one side is rejecting Jesus even with his dying breath. He's refusing to admit his fault. He's not willing to believe that Jesus is saviour and he will not choose or he will not call out to Jesus for mercy. And that is the one thing stopping any one of you, any one of us going to heaven. It doesn't matter what we've done. Jesus can forgive anything and anyone. The one thing stopping us getting to heaven and getting to know him is what we do with him is our rejection of him and yet we see in contrast to the rejection of one of the criminals we see how the other criminal receives Jesus he receives him in that ABC way we mentioned uh, we can see it in those verses actually verse 41 he says we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. He admits he's a sinner. In verse 40, he said he rebuked the criminal saying, the other one, saying, don't you fear God? Verse 41, this man has done nothing wrong. This man is perfect. This man is innocent. Verse 42, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The kingdom of where? Kingdom of God. He believed that Jesus was the Christ and he believed that Jesus was saviour. And then C, he chose to receive Jesus or if you like, he called out to Jesus. 
verse 42. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. A. Admit. B. Believe. C. Choose or, or call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. That's the result. The result of this ABC is in verse 43. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. His entrance into heaven had nothing to do with what he could now do. It wasn't about him radically changing his life and turning his life around because he had no life left to do that, to prove that. His entrance to heaven was solely and only based on him doing what we've already read in John. Receiving Jesus and believing in him. We, we kind of say this every week pretty much. I'm pretty sure we do at some point at Abbey Wood Community Church. It's what Christianity is all about. It's the biggest issue. The biggest issue is what we do with Jesus. What we do with Jesus determines whether we know God now and whether we'll be with him forever. If we reject him and continue to rebel against him, we will lose. But if we receive him, we'll gain him in our lives now and we'll gain eternal life. We'll be able to enter into his kingdom, belong to his kingdom and one day inherit his kingdom which here is described as paradise right so you've got kingdom his kingdom and paradise are basically talking about heaven and jesus says to this guy just through his simple receiving and believing in jesus he's going to be there he's going to be right there in paradise that very day all because of how he responded to jesus And that can be your experience. That can be anyone's experience. That could be and could have been the experience of all those people at that time. Pilate actually had asked the question, um, what shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Christ? Pilate asked that question 2,000 years ago and it's the same question that should be asked today and is the most important question. What shall I do with with Jesus well we've already seen from God's word John 1 verse 12 to all who receive him to those who believe in his name he gives the right to become children of God well that's what the criminal did on the cross received and believed and you can too and if you've done that if we've already done that and we've experienced this incredible forgiveness of all that we've done, including up until receiving Jesus, our rejection of him and our rebellion against God, then Jesus sets an example for us, doesn't he, to follow of a forgiveness that's not of this world, that's countercultural, that's really unnatural, supernatural. Just as Jesus has forgiven us, so his example gives us that message that we should forgive others also. Jesus was willing to give his life for us and willing to give us pardon for sins. And he wants us to be willing to give to others this incredible gift of forgiveness too. We saw a few weeks ago how hard that can be. It's not easy, but it wasn't easy for Jesus to go to the cross for all the wrong that we've done either. And so he kind of sets that before us and says, you know, as you've been forgiven, so forgive. We're going to finish with a, a video that reminds us that in many ways we were part of that party of people involved in putting Jesus on the cross and he's willing to forgive us. And then challenge us to likewise forgive others.
for joining with us today if you've got any questions about anything that's come up and been said please do get in touch there's opportunities to study Jesus's claims more and find out what the Bible says about him in detail you can meet with us online or in person we'd love to be able to help you on your journey of faith and discovering more about Jesus so do get in touch info at abbeywoodcc.org is the email address pay us a visit Easter Sunday Lesney's Lodge in Abbey Wood, 10.30, we're there every Sunday. So if you can't make it this Sunday, hopefully we'll see you again in the future.